Textual data is one of the two types of data inside every computer program, and we use textual data to represent the outside world. Let's take a detailed look at textual data inside computer programs. Before we begin, let's look at how we will break things down. We'll start by literally breaking things down, examining text letter by letter. To do this, we'll look at characters and strings. Characters and strings are two fundamental concepts that will prepare us to use textual data inside our computer programs. When we write computer programs or just use computers in general, we see text on our screens. From a data perspective, it's important to understand the difference between the text we see on our screens and how the data is actually represented underneath the hood by the computer. After we explore these ideas, you'll be ready to use textual data inside computer programs, and you'll know the difference between the text we see on the screen and the data the computer sees under the hood. Let's kick things off by breaking down a piece of textual data. Let's consider the text Deep Lizard. The text Deep Lizard has 10 letters, and each of these letters is known as a character in the realm of programming. Instead of using the word letter, we say that each symbol is a character. And when it comes to characters, we expand beyond just letters to include other symbols as well. We include alphabets, numerical digits, punctuation symbols, and mathematical symbols. All of these qualify as characters and are used to create textual data. Think about all the characters on your keyboard, and this just gets us started. There are many other symbols that qualify. A character is the smallest textual unit we'll work with as programmers. We use characters to build larger pieces of data, and we call these larger pieces of data strings. An example of a string is the textual data Deep Lizard. The text Deep Lizard is built using 10 characters. We string these characters together to create the sequence of characters Deep Lizard. And for this reason, we say that the text Deep Lizard is a string of characters. When we speak about strings with characters, we usually just drop the of characters part, and we just say that the text Deep Lizard is a string. So a string is a sequence of characters and is used to represent textual data inside computer programs. Stick with me and let me show you a couple of things you need to know about strings. The first and most important thing about strings is that we have access to each character within the string. Having access to each character means that we can reference each character. This is done by numbering each character starting at zero and counting up as we move to the right. This numbering process is called indexing. And for this reason, each character in the string is said to be indexed. Looking at the string Deep Lizard, I can refer to any of these letters using the index, and you can know which letter I'm referring to. Let's give this a go. Suppose that I tell you I'm looking at the character at index 6. With this information, can you tell which letter I'm referring to? The character at index 6 is the letter Z. These indices allow us to refer to each character in any string inside a computer program. If you think about it, this process is similar to the idea we talked about in the video on data. If we say, my name is Deep Lizard, the data is the value Deep Lizard and the reference is the word name. With strings, the indices give us a standard way of referencing the characters inside the string. I want you to notice that we have now built on the concept of reference and data value because we now know that the data value Deep Lizard is called a string. When we are working with strings as data values, we always put the strings in double quotes to indicate that the actual data value is a string. Sometimes we use single quotes as an alternative, but there's no need to stress on that right now. The quotes allow the computer to make the distinction between the reference and the actual data value. Strings are present in just about every program. As an example to jog your mind, I want you to think of the data required for trading stocks. Can you think of some strings or textual data that would be required for this type of app? Let me know what ideas you can think of in the comments. 
Let's talk now about how data is represented on our computer screens versus how data is represented inside the actual computer. Understanding the difference between the data we see as humans and how the data is interpreted by the computer is something that can go a long way in demystifying textual data inside computers. When we see text in our computer programs or just see text anywhere on our screens, the symbols we see are not what the computer sees under the hood. Anytime we see textual data, we're actually seeing pixels that are very tiny and numerous. These pixels are used to generate the symbols that we know and love, like letters, numbers, and any other symbol we can think of. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so how do computers see textual data? For this, we need to talk about character encoding. Character encoding used as a verb is the process of creating a reference for each character in some set of characters. A couple of examples you may have heard of before are Morse code and Braille. Morse code represents characters using sound or light, and Braille represents characters using a physical medium. Something you may notice about both of these examples is how the different ways of referring to the characters allow for different properties to be exploited. What exactly do I mean by this? Well, Morse code, for example, allows characters to be detected using our ears or our eyes. And Braille allows for characters to be detected using our sense of touch. If you've never used Braille before, you can get a feel for it if you're on a computer that has a physical keyboard, here's how to do it. To get the full effect, close your eyes. Then put your hands on your keyboard and feel each key until you have found exactly two keys that have a bump. This bump is a real life example of a character encoding. These bumps typically encode the F key and the J key. This encoding allows us to position our fingers on the keys without looking. Once our fingers are in the initial position, the other keys are encoded with movements that we memorize. And this is how we are able to type on a keyboard without looking. Character encoding inside computers allows for characters to be represented as numbers. And this is needed because computers only understand numbers. Basically, all the characters you can think of are numbered and the computer sees these numbers. We just list out the characters and give each character its own number. This is what the computer sees. All of this happens under the hood, of course, so we don't have to deal with these numbers directly very often. Perhaps you may have come across character encoding options if you've ever saved something in, say, plain notepad, for example. The main point here is that characters are encoded or represented using numbers under the hood. When dealing with textual data, we see sequences of characters and the computer sees sequences of numbers. Computers use pixels to draw the characters that correspond to the numbers they see. This is how computers display text to humans. This fact allows us to write programs without worrying about character encoding. We just type the characters we need to build the strings that ultimately allow us to represent objects in the real world. Let me know what you think of all of this. Does character encoding make you want to peace out on programming? <laughs> like you can count me out! What about indexing characters in a string? Do you think this is straightforward or is it just another reason to peace out on programming? Baby. <laughs> Count me out. 
type some text down in the comments and let me know what you think.